UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. According to a 2009 poll by the Pew Research Center, almost 20% of U.S. adults believe they've encountered a ghost. Almost 30% said they've felt in touch with someone from beyond the grave. At this point, there's no uniformly accepted proof of life after death, yet reports of hauntings, poltergeists, specters, and apparitions keep pouring in across the globe. Skeptics tend to portray those with a belief in ghosts as credulous or misled, while those who believe in these incorporeal beings often describe skeptics as willfully close-minded. So what's the truth? Is there an explanation for ghosts? Here's where it gets crazy. Possibly. In the 1980s, a British lecturer and engineering designer named Vic Tandy was working in a medical research laboratory when he had an inexplicable experience. He felt he was sweating but cold, and the feeling of depression was noticeable. But there was also something else. It was as though there was something in the room with me. The laboratory was about 10 feet wide by 30 feet in length. One end was closed off by doors, while the other end had a window with a cleaning bay behind it. This lab had a reputation for being haunted, and people continually reported seeing, hearing, or feeling strange things while on the grounds. While not the type to believe in spooky apparitions, Tandy was at a loss to explain the experience. Until, that is, he observed a fencing foil vibrating as though on its own power. With a few experiments, Tandy discovered that there was something else in the lab a sound he could not consciously register. What we call sound is a variation in surrounding air pressure, and it's often represented as a wave. If a book drops from a shelf on the other side of a room, the sound wave will travel between the air from the book toward you. It's a traveling wave. Yet Tandy's lab was permeated by a standing wave, which occurs when the sound wave is folded back on itself, concentrating its energy in a specific area. Tandy found the vibration to be around 18.98 hertz. A quick consultation with the lab's foreman revealed that a new fan in the cleaning room was creating this standing wave. The sound waves the fan produced were low frequency, functionally inaudible, but the frequency itself was the culprit. It appears 18 hertz is approximately the resonant frequency of the human eye. If this low-frequency wave hits the eyeball's resonant frequency, it can cause the eye to vibrate, creating a smearing of vision. With this in mind, the smearing could easily create things that look like shadowy figures. Additionally, whole body vibrations can induce hyperventilation, creating a feeling of anxiety and fear similar to that of a panic attack. This certainly can't explain every instance of an alleged haunting, but it does provide an intriguing explanation for haunted sites around the world, and it furthers the debate between the skeptics and the true believers. According to many ghost hunters, skeptics are willfully close-minded, but according to the skeptics, some of the so-called ghost hunters are even worse, milking personal tragedy for profit. In some cases, what we call ghosts can be explained, and just maybe, that's something the ghost hunters don't want you to know. A lot of people who throw this stuff out with the bathwater and say that no, psychic powers, are, those people may not be aware of the extensive research that has been conducted. Now, most people do know about Project Stargate, which was a real life thing where the United States government paid for research into remote viewing, most famously with a fellow named Ingo Swan. Some people also might know that uh, the USSR and China also conducted research into psychic powers.